Many of us are walking around with chronic low-grade inflammation, which is linked to diseases like diabetes, cancer, and dementia. But there is something that we can do about it. So in today's video, I'm going to give you 10 actionable steps to help you reduce inflammation and get back in control of your health. And I have a free PDF guide of the 10 steps that we're covering today linked below. If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. Now, some inflammation is good. It's the body's natural immune response to infection or injury. Think of getting a cut on your finger. Some inflammation is needed as part of the healing process, but it should be switched off again once your finger has healed. But now, due to poor lifestyle choices, many of us have constantly switched on low levels of inflammation in our bodies. And this can contribute to physical disease and even mental health issues like depression. Excess inflammation can also lead to muscle damage, skin problems, fatigue, soreness, swelling, and discomfort. And the foods that we eat can impact the amount of inflammation that we have in our body. Think of inflammation like a fire. Your daily food habits will act either as putting coal on the fire or throwing water on top. So let's get into the principles. So there is no one specific food or food group that can be added or removed to help decrease inflammation. What is most important is our overall patterns of eating and the foods that we eat most of the time. And the Mediterranean diet is the dietary pattern that has been shown in research to best support reducing inflammation in the body. And this is an eating pattern that is high in fruits and vegetables, greater than five servings a day. It has fish two to three times a week, whole grains, low fat dairy, nuts and seeds, spices, and many other flavorings with a low to moderate intake of meat. The Mediterranean diet is also rich in heart healthy fats like olive oil. And this diet is rich in antioxidants to help fight oxidative stress in the body. It's even in the name, anti oxidant. And these also help fight free radicals and inflammation in the body. This dietary pattern also promotes really good gut bacteria, which brings me to step two. This is prioritizing eating for good gut health. So good bacteria in our gut produce compounds like short chain fatty acids and these can prevent inflammation. And the more good bacteria that we have in our gut, the more anti-inflammatory compounds that they would produce for us. And following a Mediterranean diet pattern will help with this. Other numerical goals, because I know some people love a target, would be aiming to have at least 25 grams of fiber every single day. Fiber is food for our gut bacteria, and it's important to keep them well fed so that they can do our job to help us. And fiber can be found in fruit, veg, whole grains, nuts and seeds, or an easy way to think of it is just plant foods. The next numerical target is aiming to have 30 different plants every single week and this will provide our gut bacteria with variety and variety is important to promote diversity amongst our gut bacteria meaning that we'll receive a wider range of benefits I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below it really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos like this one and while you're at it I would love it if you gave the video a thumbs up too Now we all know fruit and vegetables are good for us and that they provide us with important vitamins and minerals, but they also provide us with phytonutrients, which are plant chemicals that can help fight inflammation in the body. Now you want to aim for a minimum of five portions a day and the more you can include, the better. And this is both fruit and veg, not one or the other. And variety is key, so make sure that you mix up your choices regularly. Include all different types of vegetables. Think of every color on the rainbow. You want your leafy green vegetables, you want your brightly colored peppers and carrots, and you want your cruciferous veg like your broccoli and your cauliflower too. Some of us fall into a pattern where we eat the same veg and the same fruit every single week. So try to mix it up week on week. Buy bags of of mixed veg or mixed berries as an easy quick way to start getting in more variety into your diet. If you're looking for more ways to start getting in more fruits and vegetables, you could try different cooking methods. You have your boiling, your steaming, but grilling and barbecuing vegetables is another lovely tasty way to get more in. You can try to spiralize or grate in courgettes or carrots in with pasta dishes, even in with oats. You could try and do half and half of regular rice and cauliflower rice, add veg into smoothies, take raw carrot sticks or cucumbers as a snack with hummus and try more veggie based meals, like a vegetarian lasagna. If you have any other good tips for sneaking in more fruit and veg, let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear them. But all of these changes will be really beneficial because you're going to be getting in more nutrients, more antioxidants, lots of fiber, it will help with your immune system, it will be promoting good bacteria and it will be reducing inflammation. 
Step four is trying to reduce your intake of processed foods. So it's minimizing your intake of overly processed meals, cakes, biscuits, and pastries. Small amounts in moderation are okay. And sometimes we just need to choose the more convenient option because life gets busy. But it's trying to avoid too many of these foods on a regular basis. And many foods are processed to some extent. Like olive oil didn't just come out of the olives like that. It's the really ultra processed foods that you want to be more mindful of. And again, it's what we're eating most of the time that matters. Step five is do not forget the importance of healthy fats. Omega-3 fats in particular are well known for their anti-inflammatory benefits. And the best source of omega-3s in our diet is oily fish, which is why I have included oily fish as one of my top superfoods in this video here. Oily fish tends to usually be your colored fish. So think of things like your salmon, your sardines, your mackerel, your herring, and your trout. And you want to be aiming to have two portions of fish a week, and one of these should be oily. And what about plant sources of omega-3? So plant foods I've established are great for us. And some of them, like walnuts and flax seeds, are often promoted as great sources of omega-3. And yes, they are good sources, but the type of omega-3 that they contain is different. It's ALA. Unfortunately, this ALA is poorly converted into the beneficial type of omega-3 that we want to be looking out for, which is EPA and DHA. So it's best not to count these plant foods as a source of omega-3. So ideally, omega-3 from oily fish is the best way to get in your omega-3s. But if you don't eat fish because you don't like it, or if you follow a vegan lifestyle, I would consider taking a supplement. What you want to be looking out for is a supplement that contains EPA and DHA, at a dose of around 400 to 500 milligrams daily for an adult. And if you're a vegan, you can get omega-3 supplements that are sourced from algae. Olive oil is also a key ingredient in a Mediterranean or an anti-inflammatory diet. So it's a great oil to choose as your primary fat in cooking or as salad dressings. If you're cooking at high temperatures, you can use rapeseed oil as this has a higher smoke point. Now step six is choosing whole grains as much as possible. This is your wholemeal breads, your wholemeal pasta, over the white varieties. Because again, this will provide more fiber and promote healthy gut bacteria. It'll also help prevent constipation and they're a great source of energy. So choose 100% wholemeal or whole grain where possible. And also try leaving the skin on fruits, vegetables, and potatoes where you can. Step seven is focusing on eating more legumes, pulses, and nuts and seeds. This is beneficial because they're a plant source of protein, again, a good source of fiber, again, promoting good gut bacteria. And many of them often help with lowering cholesterol too. What you can do is you can try and bulk up your regular meals by adding more beans, legumes, or pulses into them. Or you can make completely plant-based vegetarian meals. Even just doing it once or twice a week will help. For some people, they find beans a little bit hard to digest. So what you can do is you can soak them and rinse them well before cooking, and this Will help with that. Also try having nuts as a snack. Our nuts and seeds are great sprinkled over things like your oats, your yogurt, even over avocado and toast or over salads. They can give a really nice crunch to a dish. Many people are scared of nuts because they think that they are very high in calories and therefore fattening. But we actually know that people who consume nuts regularly are better able to manage their weight. Step eight is including fermented foods and moderate amounts of dairy. Moderate amounts of dairy is a feature seen in the Mediterranean diet. Think Greek yogurt. And low fat dairy has been used in many anti-inflammatory diet trials. But research is now suggesting that the full fat variety is also okay. So it's more of a personal preference. Including fermented dairy like live or probiotic yogurts or drinks like kefir or foods like sauerkraut can also be helpful for promoting good gut bacteria. Some of these foods can be more expensive, so it's not that you need to have them all the time, but dabbling here and there is a good dietary habit to get into. What about probiotic supplements? The evidence for probiotic use for just general health or reducing inflammation is weak at present. Scientists are still trying to figure out the best types, dose, and formulations for making these. Now there's good evidence behind probiotics in certain conditions, and usprobioticguide.com is a good resource if you are interested in learning more about probiotics. But for now, for general health, you're better off focusing on getting in your fiber and your variety for your gut health, whilst we wait for more science to guide us. Now the Mediterranean diet features small amounts of meat. It includes lean meat like chicken and turkey more frequently. Red meat is important for iron and B vitamins. However, a little can go a long way. So enjoying red meat two to three times a week should be enough. Processed meats should be limited. And processed meats include sausages, rashers, pepperoni, salami, hot dogs, and corned beef. Now step 10 is including lots of herbs and spices. Make herbs and spices your best friend. Don't leave them gathering dust in the cupboards. 
Herbs and spices are great sources of phytochemicals. These again are plant chemicals that can help fight inflammation in our body. And the most well-studied phytochemicals are polyphenols. And these are malabsorbed in the small intestine. They get down to the large intestine where our microbes digest them and then the magic starts to happen. They transform them into absorbable and beneficial compounds linked with better health outcomes. Now the top 15 herbs and spices in terms of polyphenol content include capers, celery seeds and cloves, sage, thyme and oregano, peppermint, rosemary and spearmint, star anise, basil and curry powder, ginger, cinnamon and caraway. So my challenge for you is to try and add a herb or a spice to every single meal. Think cinnamon over your porridge, drinking a cup of peppermint tea with your lunch, adding basil over a tomato pasta dish or adding curry powder to a stir fry. Get creative. And we also get polyphenols from food. And some of the top polyphenol foods include berries, grapes, and apples for your fruit, flax seeds, hazelnuts, and almonds for your nuts and seeds, olives, red onion, and broccoli for your vegetables, extra virgin olive oil for your fats, and for drinks, filtered coffee, black tea, cocoa, and green tea. Finally, remember that managing stress, getting enough sleep, and regular exercise also plays an important role in managing inflammation in the body. A balanced diet is only one part of the puzzle. Another important point to note is that if you're carrying extra weight, this is associated with chronic low-grade inflammation in the body. So taking steps to manage this will also help. Now, weight loss is not easy and it's a lot more complicated than what we've been led to believe. So seek support and be kind to yourself. Now, hopefully this video has been helpful. And remember that I have a free guide with all of the steps that we covered today linked below in the description box. I want to thank Thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and healthy and I'll see you again next week.